this next group we're very excited to have um, for the first time at Northern Roots an English country dance ensemble. Um, and they'll tell you more about that music and, and what it's about. Um, Anna Patton is a clarinet player who lives here in Brattleboro, Vermont. Um, and she'll be joined by uh, Peter Barnes on uh, winds and guitar and Karen Axelrod on piano. How is everyone? How many people here have contra danced? Okay, I have a question. <laughs> uh, now, uh, where did contra dancing come from? Who said English country? Yeah, quadrilles, if you do it in a set of four, it's likely to have come from France. If you're doing it in lines, it's likely to come from England. And the kind of music, can people hear me? Should I get on this thing? He's making it up anyway, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. So right about 40 years ago, aliens from Venus. <laughs> now actually, English country dance is, is a precursor to a lot of the, um, a lot of, I can't see anyone up here, it's just a bunch of lights. Oh, mom! <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, never mind. I have to go to the I have to plug it anyway. Make something up. For our first number, we will play a lovely tune. So one, one thing you should know if you're a country dancer is that English you. country dancing, you dance sometimes to jigs and reels, but you also get to dance to a lot of other meters. And we're going to start with a tune that's in a 3-2 feel. So not a not a waltz kind of three, but just the kind of gliding around that three. Um, so if you picture sort of Jane Austen movie regalia, it's, it's that sort of thing in this sort of gliding dance. Which is actually a very nice thing about this kind of music. Which is not contra dance music is great, but it's it's mostly jigs and reels, and if you're lucky, you'll get a waltz at the break or at the end of the night, right? But here we have a 3-2, which is a nice, slow, stately meter. We have hornpipe rhythm. People actually play hornpipes. Rants, which is a great meter. And we have the jigs and reels. And uh, lots of waltz. It's great. The, the expressive range of English country dance music. I started off as a country dance musician. And uh, it was the range of English country that kind of sucked me in. And it's such a beautiful music. And hopefully, we'll give you a little, <laughs> little taste of what that sounds like. So this first tune is Sally in Our Alley, which used to be a very popular song in the 1700s um, about a woman named Sally who was in the alley. Go figure. <laughs> Thank you. 
So th this next number will be something called Old Wife Behind the Fire. Unrelated to Sally, who's in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of tune would you say this is? Is it a slip jig? No. A jig? Not at all. It's no. in 6-8. No. <laughs> is yeah, it... <laughs> for second syllable. <laughs> I defer to Peter because he has published two wonderful collections of English country dance music, which are available. I'm sorry, I'm distracted by tuning. And therefore, I think of his, him as an expert, which he occasionally lives up to. <laughs> if he weren't tuning, if he weren't distracted by tuning, he would say that it's a... Uh, a fairly raucous tune that's not a slip jig or waltz. But is it? Is it four? Yeah. This one has a little bit of an early music feel to me. Is Elijah in the audience? <laughs> he came to my class. This, this is a student of Anna's who's like, he's really into I early music. I have a student who knows much more about this than me. And I'll show him this tune next week and he'll tell me all about it. So this is Old Wife Behind the Fire. Another cool thing about English country dance music is that um, when we're playing it, we're not obviously we're not trying to reenact the music. It's a very living, alive, and uh, both contemporary and old tradition all at once. Uh, it, it basically exploded onto the English scene in 1650 when uh, this guy named uh, John Playford published a book, the first published book of all these tunes. Um, but since then, um, even even this year. There are more, t more tunes and dances are being written, than, than maybe even than back then. It's, it's, and people are dancing it nowadays. It's, 
It's not the kind of thing you do in costume. It's like a contra dance, but uh, it's a, a lot, more, lot more interesting figures. Th this next one we're going to do is called Smithy Hill. Which, you know this one? It's uh, by this uh, English composer named Brian Jenkins, who um, wrote it, I don't know, maybe five, six years ago? Maybe 10 or 11 years ago. Right. When we were very young indeed. When, when some of us were very young indeed. And some of us looked about the same. Um, that, that was actually one tune that we did opt to do the traditional 1650 setting for. Um, uh, uh, we're going to do one more, one more number, and I'm supposed to remind you that after this is a break, there's an intermission, in which we hope you will, you will spend lots of money on our products. I have a used car for sale out in the, in the driveway, too. Just want to check it out. 
So we're going to do something called Barberini's Tambourine right now, which is a nice, fast, exciting English dance. And uh, I also want to say I know there's a lot of traditional musicians here, and there's also a, a classical music component to this event. And if any of you classical musicians are sort of looking for the first way to dip your toe into traditional music or dance music, you should check out this English country dance stuff. It's great fun, and it, it is sort of on the cusp of traditional and classical music in a lot of ways, and, um, and you get to sort of spontaneously orchestrate and improvise, and um, that's what we are attempting to do for you. And, and this explains why when, whenever you look for recordings of this, no record store knows where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> this tune is, Peter Barnes is my, my hero of this particular tune, so... I'm very good. Okay. <laughs> Barberini's tambourine. Barberini's tambourine. <laughs> 